Funding for painting journeys is provided by Veritas. Financial knowledge is power. Be empowered. God's beauty is all around us, and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello, this is Kitty Lynn Klisch, and you're watching Painting Journeys. I'm glad you joined me today. We're going to take a trip to the Grand Canyon, and um, it's a marvelous, uh, tremendous place, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. But first of all, um, on our last episode, I was working in the Petrified Forest. I was, uh, I was in love with the agate log in the Petrified Forest. And so I wanted to show you just how that turned out. I took it home. I made very, very few changes on it because it just really didn't need them. I darkened this area in here uh, to show a little more depth. And now you can really see this gully that is going through there that's full of trees. And you can see this agate log that has been supported with cement. And uh, eventually, someday, maybe in another thousand years or million years or whatever, that log will be washed away. But as for now, it stands. And so that is the agate log in the Petrified Forest in Arizona. And then so from there, we traveled that same day, we traveled on um, up to the Grand Canyon. And I, we were in the south, the south rim of the Grand Canyon, and the, um, the most beautiful picture that I took, I believe, was this one. I, I just thought that was just so phenomenal, but I um, uh, had a little trouble with my printer, and it didn't print out quite right for me. But, you know, those things are really not important because I'm not going to be copying the photograph. I'm going to be creating from it. So once again, my name is Kitty Lynn Klisch, and this is Painting Journeys, and we're going to go to on a journey to the southern rim of the Grand Canyon today. So here we go. First of all, my palette, same palette I always use, different paintings, same palette. <laughs> I think that what I'm going to do today Oh, and let me explain this. This is this is kind of crazy looking. I know. I'm. I was. I was getting ready for the show, and I thought, hmm, maybe if I tried with the complement color in acrylic, if I just went back in there and tried to make some darks and some lights. Well, I'm not an acrylic painter, and I don't really like the medium. It's all watery and icky. So anyway, it didn't work out too well for me, but maybe you can see it. This area right here is this area, and there's the trees there and there, and this is this ledge right here. And But don't pay any attention to this. This looks like a mess. This looks like somebody's nightmare. <laughs> so we're going to work on this today. Now, and I'm going to start in the background but I'm not, I'm not going to go for any detail at all because I can see that this, this painting has a lot of subject matter to it and is, is probably going to take me some work back in my home studio to complete it. So I just want to kind of get this brushed in quickly, lightly kind of massed in, and then I want to work more on what's pretty, this part right here. And then I'll try to bring that to life before I, uh, you see it on the next episode. Always remember, if you want to see how a painting was finished, tune in to the very next episode because that's always, it always starts with showing the last painting from the last episode. Okay, well, that's enough of that talking business. Now we better get to work. All right, now I've mixed up a little bit of um, some gray here, and 
I am going to just take a brush and this one looks like a nice brush. And I'm just going to come in and, and maybe very thinly mass in some darks. And that's a little too thin. It's not covering my green real well. You know, when you're there, you see all these marvelous photographs of the Grand Canyon. And then when you get there, in a way it's a little disappointing because unless the sun is looking just perfectly in a, in a certain way at sunset, I, I've been told sunset is the best time to visit the Grand Canyon. Um, you don't see all the colors. It's the light from this, from the uh, setting sun that actually gives you all those beautiful colors that you see in the postcards and everything. So, um, I want I want that to to happen here. And but I'm going to have to take a lot of creative license. I know that. Creative license is where you just um, do what you need to do to make it resemble your representation of what it is that you're painting. And all artists have creative license. No one has to paint things exactly as they see them. Some people paint uh, very abstract and those are very beautiful and they they see something in there i don't usually it's not my cup of tea abstract but it certainly is for some people and that's okay and then other people paint just as sharp as if it was photo they call it photorealism and you can't tell it from a photo that's a, that's kind of uh the extreme uh, going the opposite way. So now we'll just take a little bit of this light and we'll try to catch a couple of these plateaus in here. There again, I'm trying to keep this very, very light. The uh, downward stroke of the brushwork creates a feeling of going downwards and the um, a downward movement and a horizontal brush stroke creates the feeling of of a of a, a flat. So that's why I always try to paint, you know, the dark edges going downwards and the, I'm hoping that this will kind of look like different, different things in there. This is a very thin wash that I'm using here. And I'll probably have to go back in there and maybe just a little more color would help, especially in this area right in here. Just saw just a little bit of the color maybe in this area right in here too okay this is light one of the most important things to remember is the light against dark you know we have all this really um, dark subject matter and this What's in the background is quite 
um, oh, it's like, it's almost like a mist on it. I don't know why that is. I mean, you know, it's kind of hazy, foggy-like. I don't know what makes it that way. I've been to the Grand Canyon twice now, and I, I don't understand why it, it doesn't look real sharp and clear ever that I've seen it, but maybe it's the time of year that I go. Maybe the heat in the summertime causes a kind of a steamy stuff to come up. Let's try a little bit of a, of a brown. I'm just mixing, I like to mix my browns. I never use a um, store-bought brown. I mix my, my brown with my uh, cad red light and my sap green and maybe this guy right here is kind of behind. Maybe we'll put a little color in him and make him come down and down. There we go. And he's a little darker right along the edge here. And that's more of a point right there. As I can see now I'm going to have a challenge when I take this back to the studio trying to get this to look right. I didn't think it would be that tough, but and I really don't want to get bogged down with it or I won't get to my objective, which is the foreground for you. So, okay. We'll just put in a few other colors in there and kind of try to get it to show up a little bit. I like that violet in there. I actually saw that violet when I was there. That's kind of a, a neat color. There's so much happening there. Okay, maybe a little brighter orange. I just sort of, you know, as I'm painting, I'm just sort of talking my, my way through it. I know that it, it still does not look like I want it to look. Maybe if I reinforce my dark so that you can see that those are going in a downward there. And there's another one here and he's coming right there. And then this has got some dark here. I think my favorite, one of my favorite things about, about painting is the fact that, you know, especially with oil, oil is so wonderful. It's such a wonderful medium because if you don't um, if you don't like the way it turns out, you know, you can just wipe it out and do it over again. It's, it's the most, one of the most forgiving mediums. And yet, for some reason, some people really struggle with it because you have to have a good, a good handle on what you're doing with it, that's for sure. Okay. You know, that, if I step back, that doesn't look too bad. It's kind of kind of doing what I want it to do. And then I'll just take a little light here and come across there and make it look like a little plateau, maybe a little more right here. Okay, I think that's going to be enough on that. I got a little more orange right there. Right in here, a little more orange, and that comes out there a little bit more. It has a little more color to it, 
as you get closer. And you see by, by my um, going in a downward motion here, you can see how I'm building the, the, sh the shape of it. Okay. All right, now. Yeah, that looks like mountains back there. We've got a lot of work to do there, though. All right, now some reds and oranges, and I don't want to make this as bright as the picture is. So I'm going to tone down my colors and um, right here on this edge. And this is coming like this. And it's coming down and it's kind of bumpy. Goes in. And then it goes out. And I have a hunch. What I really want to do is get my palette knife and just go to town with that. But I did that on the last show. So I'm going to try to stay with a brush for, for this painting. And let's see here. So this is a little darker. Now I need a little more violet. This is a little darker right in here. And there's some dark in here. There's some real dark right down in here. Um, this is very a very dark area in there. And a little red in that. I like that alizarin crimson. You put that in there and it really makes it come to life. I'm trying to just find some of those dark areas there that I want to... I'm trying to set myself in here for where am I, you know, what kind of a... Of a and then this is dark green up in here. So we'll take some green and we'll add a little bit of alizarin crimson to it, darken it a little bit. And there, this is this, this rock comes around like this right here. And then it comes in. Let's see here. We need some space back here because we have that rock right there. So we need a little light back there and a little light right back in here behind this too. There we go. Okay. And then starting right about here, we've got a real dark area. And that's coming down. We're just going to mass that in. And we've got some pretty dark area right down in here. It's, it's kind of hard to tell right now what it's going to look like um, because it's so all over the place with color. I'm going to add some violet. A little bit of light. More violet. Hmm. It's fun. It's fun being able to be here with you today and mixing up these colors and trying to make something make sense. <laughs> oh well. You'll bear with me as I struggle across this canvas, won't you? That's all part of the painting journey. Okay. Looks like a little bit of light right in there. A little yellow. This all seems to be gold in here, but let's get this rock here. I 
Now he's going to have to be darker. You see how he's darker than what is behind him. So we're always, we're always looking at the value. What is darker? Well, I think that needs a little more orange in it. I don't like that dirty color there. That's a little bit better. Maybe a little red. Me and my reds, I love red. There we go. That's coming down like that. And then there's some light. is kind of coming this way. Alrighty. And then there's light right here. It's going to be my one brush painting. You notice how, how I am I'm doing what I used to tell my students. Don't do this now. Don't paint all your whole painting with one brush. And look at me. Here I am doing it all with one brush. But oh well. For the sake of expediency, we'll just come over here with this. And there's a little bit of green on here. And then the <clears throat> bushes and stuff are kind of a grade, uh, a grade green. They weren't real um, bright. You know, it was very, uh, very desert-like as far as the colors were concerned. And on the foliage, let's see here. Nope, that's not going to be dark enough. I'm just mixing away here. Here we go. Now I want this to be, just show that it's like a little foliage here. I don't care for that around there. I'm going to have to get rid of that. And then this yellow-green foliage is all coming down here. I'll wipe this out. because it's the light. Very light. Um, top of that rock. Right in there. Coming back. And then we're going to have some of the, this light right here coming right around that to kind of set that out there. That's going to need there we go. All right. Okay, and then right down in here, um, make this come down. Right down in here. Now we've got this little, little green, um, 
business here going across the top and coming over to here and then we have very light um, very very light almost white that rock is so light and there was a place you know where there was a flat uh, sort of a flat plateau like this and it had a great big boulder and it was just sitting there it did it, it did not look like it belonged there it was just sitting there and it was so it was so odd to me because it was like some big giant hand had picked it up and placed it there it was the strangest thing and i'm I, I, well okay i've got the picture right here and i want you to look at that now doesn't that look like a big giant hand picked that boulder up and put it down right there on that flat rock. I think that's the darndest looking thing. Anyway, I was quite fascinated with that. And uh, you can see it there in the, in the photo. I always like to bring a few extra photos with me to show you how um, some of the other things that, you know, that I saw in the area. Boy, I'll tell you, those people that went down in the canyon, I thought they were some real brave souls. Um, I would never be able to attempt that. I'm just putting this little shadow in where this little tree is right here. Okay, and then we have this little tree and it is um, got a pretty dark trunk on it. Now I want to make sure I don't make it too dark though. It's short and stumpy. There's, and there's the cast shadow from it. And then it's got some branches. And then we're going to make the little dark green tree. First of all, I'm going to come in with a little darker green, I think. And just I just want to tap this in. I don't want to really make it solid. Just sort of tap it. And um, then I will be able to come over that with, with the lights. There we go. Now this goes up a little bit higher. I have the nicest young man today is here in the studio with me. He's from the Madison area. He's a student and he's one of my cameramen today. And he just gave me the notice that we're halfway through this. And I'm looking at my canvas and I'm thinking, am I halfway through the canvas? I'm halfway through the show. I don't know. I think I better try to go a little faster and catch up here. Okay, now we're going to put some light oranges on this tree a little bit. I do want to make some things that, you know, look like what they look like so that you can, you can kind of get an idea of where this is going. All right, maybe it needs a little bit of dark in there. And I'll probably open that up with a little more of this, of the what's behind it later. And we have another little tree coming up here and it's got some little business. 
And he's, if you look at him very carefully, you can see how windblown he is. Uh, that's something I'm going to have to put on with my a very tiny little brush to show those that kind of tortured shape that he has there. We will, let's see, we'll take this smaller brush and get a little, see if we can do it here. And this is coming around like this, and that's coming out like that. And here, and then this is coming up here. And he's kind of got a going around there. It should be a little bit redder, I think. There we go. And this in here, let me see, let me take this brush and mix up some nice red. Hmm, let me see here. Well, you know, when I don't talk, that means I'm really thinking hard and I'm asking myself, oh goodness, Kitty, whatever made you think you could p pull this off today, something this complicated and subject-wise, something that probably take me several days to paint in my studio. I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like, well, I think I'll just go for it. What the heck? You know what they always say, 50% chance of a mess or a masterpiece. So we'll just, as long as you bear with me now, because before this is over with, I might surprise you. <laughs> You'll bear with me, won't you? Sure you will. There's just so many little things here that I'm just not real sure what I want to leave in and what I want to take out. You know, sure enough, if I leave something in, it's going to be the thing that needs to be taken out. And then there's always the danger of putting too much and see we need some of that light up here again light red and orangish up in here because this is kind of coming down and around there's a nice nice orange backlit area right in here that okay and then this comes down here and then that starts getting the the darker again and then this let's see there's some area right in here okay That's a little lighter. I'm painting very thin because I know I'm going to be going back over this with um, in my home studio to do the finishing touches on it. So I'm working very thin. I'm not piling on the paint like I did last week. All right, 
That's coming around like that. Now let's see here. Let's get something behind this. And this just looks like, to me, this just looks like um, light, um, a rock with some kind of a sagebrushy uh, look, looking stuff on it. And but it's definitely behind this, so it's not as bright as this is, but it's not as soft and faded as that is. So we have to come up with something in between. There has kind of a pinkish look to it. There's some light right down in here that's going across, and that's very light because. There again, it's another little plateau that is behind. This is coming up this way here and going like so. And that's, that's down there, that little plateau. And then this is, this is in front of it here. Okay. Let's see, I think I lost my way. All right, I'm gonna come and darken this a little bit and right in here a little bit. There we go. Okay, now we're doing this and those little dark red things in there Um, I'm sure it's like sagebrush, but it has a... Um, so I, when I put those on, I'm going to have to put it, make it um, darker on the base and just kind of pick those up a little bit. And I'm not going to put a bunch of them in, just, just pick them up a little bit and then... Um, I'm going to come in with a little bit of, of the orangey color to put on the top, kind of an orangey brown to kind of make them, you know, just a little something so that we know something's growing in there. I don't know if that looks right or not. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see here. We'll just kind of... Soften that down a little bit. Thank goodness for softening. I don't know where I'd be if I couldn't soften because that makes a big difference there. Now that doesn't look too bad now. Now we still have some bright, bright reddish orange coming right down in here that's in front of this area, and it's dark. It's got some dark in it, right in there. I don't know if you guys see that or not, but I do. And that, that's what helps now. Put this behind this, and that behind this, so. Okay, and that's going all the way down here, it looks like, and now that this little corner, this little uh, hole area here that is um, in here, I want that even darker and more dramatic. Um, yeah, I want that have a little more of a shape and, and more of an intense to it and little sharper edges um, and then it'll soften as it's coming out and I think that helps that uh, look yeah okay 
And then there is a place right here that looks like it's going straight down. And this is going across. Okay. Now then. Um, I see violet. I actually see it. I'm seeing violet in the in here. It's coming up like this. Oh, that's not enough paint on there. Okay, come on now. Come on. Do what I ask you to. Okay. I'm gonna have to wipe that out. We'll wipe that area out. We have too much paint on it to for it to uh, do what I want it to do here. I'm gonna take the violet and I'm just gonna put that violet right up in there. Hmm. All righty. And that's gonna come down right in here. And then this right here is a nice light, kind of an orangey red right in here. And this right in here is sort of the same thing, kind of a nice bright orangey red that's coming down and around. And then we have the light where the light is striking here. Because that's kind of coming over right in there. So we'll have the light striking right in here, going in a crossword, crosswise. Okay, well, that's showing up pretty good. Now we have more orange. Um, coming around here, coming around this thing here, and it's coming down here. It's real bright right there, right in there. And then that's all dark and that's trees, okay? All right, now let's see if we can get this right in here. Um, painted. And I think this is a little lighter right in here. And it is kind of like a stand that's kind of coming up. And there's a little one coming down there. And then there's some little things that are here. And this, this comes out a little bit more. And then that comes out a little bit more. And this is a little lighter in here. And there's this dark, this right in here, coming around. And that's, I'm, I'm going to just go with a purple on that, right underneath there. There we go. That's what I wanted. Oh, I can see I'm going to have a ton of work on this one before I bring it back to show you. Oh yeah. I hope that you'll be sure and catch our next um, episode of Painting Journeys where you'll see the finished work. And then maybe you'll be able to tell that, yeah, maybe she does know a little bit about what she's talking about because you can't really tell from this, I know. Like I said, if I would have used my knife, 
It might have made it better, but that's okay. I may go over it when I get it to my home studio. I may go over it with a knife a little bit and tighten up some of those areas. And let's see, this is coming down in here. And it's red. I can see the red peeking through down in here. And the red peeking through down in here. Okay, my little cameraman just gave me the 15 minute sign of which means that I have got to really kick it. Okay, so let's see here. Um, hmm. I think we'll make that green for those trees. Um, it's almost an olive green, not a very pretty green. Okay. Now there is a tree right up in here. Well, I better get a little darker color for him. Let me put that right there and come back and Take another brush and make that little guy just a little bit darker there. And he's coming right up in here. And got a little bit coming out there. And then he's coming on down into the side of this um, business here. This is much lighter along in here where the sun is hitting this area here. That's a little lighter. We want this to be softened back here because it's really supposed to be behind. Okay, let's see here. Little red in the tree here. And hmm, let's see. There we go. And that's just coming right on down into the dark right there. So it's all dark right in here. And more yellow right in here. I see something here. Now this is kind of interesting. It actually looks like blue. Uh, there's a, like a blue sagebrushy type tree that is coming over here. Okay. All right. Now we have to really. I want to get this covered. So. I'm just going to go for it in here. And then we've got some light stuff is coming out there. And some light stuff right down here. This need really, really needs to be more purple. 
Doggone it, that's all pretty purple right in there. And coming down here. And then there's some areas where it's really light. Nice and light, right? Right in here. Coming right there and right in here. And then it's just kind of softens into that. All right there. That's going there. Okay. And I'm going to take the violet and put that violet around there. Okay. Now we're going to get that blue tree and lighten it just a bit and thin the paint down just a tad. All righty. And then we're going to come, he's right about in here, and he's a real pretty kind of a blue color. And so when I mix the blue with the red, it just kind of just shows just a little bit of, of what he looks like right down in there. And then it's dark on the base where he's coming out of the, out of the land there. This needs to be going in a direction like this. Okay, and he's there. Now there's some yellow greens. Um, that are growing down in here. And some right in there. This is light. Oh, you can tell now when I'm all over this palette and my brush is moving fast. You can tell that I'm getting panicky because I'm trying to get my paint, my canvas covered. I want to at least do that for you. Goodness sakes. Okay. And that violet's coming down. And then we've got some little green Dealies that are coming up in here. It's a little too bright. Ooh, don't like that. Let me calm it down. Boy, it's that cameraman from Madison. He's making me work so hard today. All right, right in here, okay. Let's see, can we throw a bunch of trees in here? Let's see if we can just kind of scumble some on and make this make some sense. <laughs> We're gonna do it anyway, whether it makes sense or not. The hour has come and now the station director Okay, he's going to come down from the booth and he's going to take one look at this and he's going to say, now kitty, it looks fine just like it is. Leave it that way. And I'm going to look at him and I'm going to say, you know what you're full of? I know darn well it doesn't. But that's okay. Everybody's got an opinion. That's the thing about art, you know? Some people like certain things and other people like other things. But a world without art would be like, how they say that, a world without heart or something, I don't know. Anyway, it wouldn't be a good place to live, at least not for somebody like me that thrives on it. Hey, you know what, we did it, kids. We got this canvas covered. 
when you think about that, huh? It looks pretty messy. It's kind of hard to understand, but but we did it. And so, three cheers for us, right? And three cheers for you, because if you stayed with me as I traveled across this canvas and tried to get this to look like something, three cheers for you too. You deserve it. I just hope you've enjoyed, enjoyed my challenge today of trying to get the, the Grand Canyon on here in an hour. <laughs> How many millions of years did it take God to make the Grand Canyon and I'm trying to paint it in an hour? Oh well. That's just the way it is. Some people are kind of foolish. And others have got no sense at all. Oh, to heck with it. All right. <laughs> Okay, let me see here. Yeah, I don't like that s silly tree I just put there. I don't even know why I did it. There, it's gone. There we go. Well, let me see. What do you think? It's not too terribly bad. You know, I mean, I've done worse. <laughs> Just one more little stroke in here. And I want to tell you thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Kitty Lynn Klish. You've been watching Painting Journeys, and I hope that you will catch our next episode when I will show you the completed painting of the Grand Canyon. And then I think we'll go on out to California and we'll go to the beach. So be sure and catch the next show. Thank you so much for joining me today. Bye-bye for now. Funding for Painting Journeys is provided by Veritas. Financial knowledge is power. Be empowered.